What's up, Bloom Church family? Pastor Mike here. I want you to stop right where you're at because I want to share a really important word with you. And you're going to start seeing every day one of the members of the lead team here at Bloom is going to be sharing what God's placed on their heart because we're going to fill social media with hope, love, and peace. And I've been praying about what's going on and kind of what God is trying to get us to gra- gather from this and what we can learn. And it brought me to a story in Mark, Mark chapter 10. There was a young man that ran up to Jesus and he says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life, right? What must I do to get the kingdom of God? What must I do to live that fullness? And and Jesus responds to him, why are you calling me good, right? Only God's good. But he says, I know what you're trying to ask. He says, you got to follow all the commandments, right? Just follow, keep the commandments. And the young man kind of looks at Jesus kind of like, okay, I'm doing all of that. What else? Because I still feel some emptiness inside. What else? I'm not fully fulfilled. What else? Because something's missing. And then Jesus says, there's one thing you can do. He says, you haven't done this. He says, go and sell your possessions. Give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And then the young man, the Bible says, leaves with his head low, sad, and walks away from Jesus because he had a lot of possessions. He wasn't able to do it. And I look at that story, and a lot of times we'll read that story and we think Jesus is talking about money, right? Because later on the disciples go, dude, who can get the kingdom of God, right, if a rich man can't enter, if it's difficult for a rich man? How is that possible, Jesus? You're making a statement here that seems so impossible. And then Jesus says, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But not with God. Everything is possible with God. And what Jesus is trying to do is get the disciples to understand something really important. He's teaching to the leaders of the church. He's teaching to who will be the leaders of our faith. He's teaching to what this concept, these disciples that need to have, that's going to trickle down to even us 2,000 years later. He's trying to get us to understand a very important concept here. Just two chapters earlier, the disciples were trying to cast out a demon in a young boy. And they go, Jesus, we weren't able to do it. And Jesus prays and the demon goes and they go, Jesus, how were you able to do it? He goes, for a miracle like that, you need to have praying and fasting. And what he's trying to get us to understand is if we want to experience the kingdom of God, the things of God, the peace of this world, we got to empty ourselves. We got to surrender ourselves. We got to get to this place, less of me, more of him. God, I'm not going to look at my security in the things of this world. I'm not going to lay up treasures in this world. I'm not going to put my security on people or man or human. I'm going to surrender to you. Less of me, more. I'm going to go wherever you lead. I'm going to follow. I'm going to read the word of God because they're words directed to my heart. I'm going to look at the promises of God and go, they're my promises. I'm going to surrender and say, not my will, your will be done. If we want to experience the miracles of God and the peace of God, We've got to quit looking outward for our security and look upward for the confidence that can only come from heaven. Your God has never left you. He's never forgotten you. And he will carry every burden you have. And he will give you peace beyond understanding. And joy cometh every morning. Despite what we feel now, every day we wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. So I want to pray confidence over you. I want to pray peace over you. And I cannot wait as you're praying, as you're fasting, as you're seeking God, you're going to experience the miracles of the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray right now as a church. God, we pray for your peace. We pray for your wisdom. We pray for your discernment. And we say, not my will, your will be done. Less of me, more of you. We position our our hearts and our minds in a posture of surrender. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Church, I love you. Can't wait to see you this weekend online. Pray God's peace.